There we go. How's it, how's it, guys? I have in my hand a roll of Provia 400X 120 film that says it's exposed. This roll of film, I totally forgotten about it. I don't know what pictures are on here at all. What I do know is it's probably about 20 years old. And had I not found it when I was digging around through my old student prints the other day, this would have been lost to history. And it reminded me of the story of another photographer who had a decision gone in a different way. Her images would also have been lost to history. So it is the sort of mid 1950s, and this photographer, Eve, is thinking about going to a class run by a gentleman called Alexei Brodovich, who was the art director of Harper's Bazaar. He was mentor for Richard Avedon, Irvin Penn, you know, some really huge names in photography. And she goes along, walks in with her little envelope of what she calls camera club prints in her book, and realizes immediately that she's like a little bit out of her depth there. Because, you know, this is an art director for Harper's Bazaar. So rather obviously, the entire classroom is full of experienced professionals who are looking to, you know, to, to be closer to the, to the master, Alexa, you know, in the hope of, of getting a job. So Eve makes a decision, I'm not going to show any of my prints. And Alexa is at the front of the class and he gets up and he says, has anybody brought some prints along to show us? And it's at this point that Eve's friend holds up this envelope of prints, waves them around and goes, here, 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 at the back, at the back. As the envelope gets passed forward, Alexa takes them out and he presents them. Oh, he says, reaching down to get one of print. He presents them to the, to the class for critique. And Eve recounts here in her book, she goes, I felt flayed alive. <laughs> Right, I, I think we could probably imagine, you know, the, the feeling that she's getting. Anybody who's been in a, in a live critique session may recognise it. And it's at this point that the two Eves start to diverge. She goes on to recall here that she ran home with my envelope, weeping. I agonised for a day, and then when I thought that I decided absolutely that I would not go back to class, I found myself saying that the following week's assignment was, was fashion and asking my son's nursemaid who lived in Harlem whether she knew of any fashion shows there. This is where I think a lot of us who may be subjected to this kind of criticism would take the first option, just giving up. I've had enough. I don't really want to do this, right? If that's the response I'm going to get. Because it can be, can be very hard to take. But the second Eve goes off to Harlem. She fuddles with her camera. The, the flash isn't working. Don't forget, this is all days before. Sort of, you know, auto everything. Takes them back. Alexa puts them at the bottom of the, of the pile. She's saying, oh, here we go. You know, he, he doesn't like them. He's going to save it to, to the end. So everybody can just have a go at me again. This is, this is it. And he gets to the end of, of the, the, um, the pile of prints. He says, look, I'm going to change up my normal thing. I'm going to critique these myself. He looks at them, he goes, this, this is real. This is documentary photography. This is very different from everything else that the other students have you know, supplied, which is kind of like Cecil Beaton type fashion. He says, you are not doing any more assignments for this class. I want you to go and learn by doing. I, I love that. That's 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 awesome. It's just like such a cool sort of piece of a piece of you know advice. Those photographs they get published in Picture Post. That's when Henry Cartier Bresson and Robert Kappa see them, and then go, Ah, do you know what, Eve? Would you like to join Magnum as as a photographer? And that's when Eve Arnold, the photographer, is born. But how many people would have possibly gone down that first route of not going back? How many great photographers, potential great photographers, have been lost to us throughout history because somebody said something negative 
to them about their work. Just a, um, a quick interruption, because I totally forgot earlier, is that this Sunday, it's 4th of February at 6 o'clock, it is the live stream of my Natural Light workshop. If you have bought a ticket already, I've been sending out some emails with the URL that you're going to need to access the workshop. If you haven't received one of those yet, please check your spam folder. If you can't find anything, reach out to me and I'll make sure that you actually get a link so you can join us. If for any reason you are not able to make the live stream or you would like to join, but you think, okay, well, it's, I, I've got something else planned. If you buy a ticket now, you will have access to the recording of the live stream in your TPE course library as well. So there's no excuse to, to miss out. But yeah, check your spam folders. If you haven't signed up already, you want to get a seat, click on the description box below with the link and uh, let's get back to the video. I think it, it's, it's, it's a shame that, you know, these kind of things happen. And I can, I can see why, because, you know, if I think about my own experiences, that I, when I was a student, we would have assignments and then we would be critiqued as a group in a, in a lecture room where they put all the, all the prints up on the wall. And the, the lecturers would have a look at them and they say this, that, and the next thing about them. And then your friends would also say their opinions or share their opinions about your work. And it might go something like this, you know, oh, Alex, that work, oh, geez, you know, come on, man. It's like, there's no tonal range on this or your focus is all nonsense. And, you know, your composition, man, that's just, that's just sucky. There we go. And within that, there you may recognize there's a type of tone of voice that says, I'm giving you critique, but I want you to improve. I want you, you can do better than this. There's a, there is a supportive element. At least that I, that's how I always kind of read it. You know, that, that I, I got this feeling that, you know, people are pushing me as, as I was pushing other people to be as good as they could be. That's why we were all there. We were all pulling in the same direction. The problem that I find online, especially over the years when I've been you know, a member of a lot of photography groups, is that people don't necessarily have that mutual support. There's a lot of people who come in, they just want to show how much they know by, you know, by critiquing everything in, in sight and telling everybody what's wrong with the pictures. There are people who are having a bad day and they just want to vent. There are people who just, you know, they just kind of muddle along and just don't really contribute to anything. So I think, you know, if I were looking for a place to really get some, some decent feedback on my photography that wasn't like a, you know, a paid course or something like that, then I would look for a few things. The first of all, main thing is that, is, is that community active? That's a great sign. If it is a community of even like a 20 people and there are like two or three posts a day, that's pretty good. If it's a community of 100,000 people and there's only like 10 or 20 posts a day, I would say that's probably a bad sign because there's a lot of people who come in and they're just not, they're not interacting with each other. There's no, so there's no momentum going on. If you see that there's, you know, images are getting comments and people are having a back and forth in the discussion, what a great sign. That's such a helpful thing to see within, within a group. The second thing I would probably look at is the nature of the comments. Now, not everybody is going to be making comments that are super helpful. Right? Some people just, they, they're not very eloquent when they type or whatever reason. They may just say, that's a nice photograph. That's kind of cool. Those kind of comments, okay, you see a lot of those. Nice capture. But there will be, or hopefully there will be, if this is the right kind of group, a number of voices who offer feedback, who offer supportive criticism in a more supportive kind of way. They would say, do you know what? I really like that photo. I see where you're going with that, but I think it might be stronger if you tried this. Or have you considered looking at such and such? Or, you know, I think maybe color is the wrong choice here, or that 
certain element, the way that you've composed it is a bit distracting. Those, I, I feel those are supportive comments. People saying that you've done this wrong or that's, you know, this, I have a reflector here, right? So they might say you've used the silver side of the reflector rather than the white side. So this is kind of thing, or this is light or that kind of light was touching those. That's all wrong. Those are, some, I think those are the comments that you need to be careful, you be mindful of. If you go back to Eve Arnold, you know, Alexo is saying, your work is very different. I want you to go and explore it. I want you to go find, you learn by doing, right? He could have said, look at this work. It is all rubbish. You're not doing it the correct way. Eve, you need to follow these people over here and do this. Do that, do the next thing, because that's the way it is done. But he doesn't. He recognizes within Eve Arnold that she has a, a talent. And he, he knows that her talent is not going to benefit from being the next Cecil Beaton. So he's, he's intelligent enough to be able to recognize this and to be able to guide Eve Arnold in the direction that she will benefit from going because it suits her. Somebody with more knowledge saying, have you considered this direction? Because I think that would be a good way for you. These are, these are signs that once you actually kind of are, are open to them and, and, and looking for them, you start to find them. I've followed many people and, and, and listened to many bits of advice that were actually very bad for me, but seemed like a good idea at the time. And it wasn't only until later in, in, in my career, and I'm thinking sort of 2010, around about then, that I finally came across a couple of guys who were of that caliber. Of, of, and they weren't strictly mentors because we, you know, we never had like a formal arrangement of mentoring, or whatever. But, but they were very supportive with my photography and especially my, my wedding photography, which is something that I've been revisiting recently. I've been looking, looking at a lot of it. And, and I see their influence. They guided me into a path in wedding photography, because that's what specifically we we're talking about at the time, that, that worked for me. Because they kind of went, oh, okay, well, Alex, you, you talk about this, you like this, you like that. This, is, I, I, this may be something that's worth exploring. And they were right. So I think that's a fantastic way of, you know, finding somebody is just listening, looking at the people who are supportive with you, who don't tell you that you're doing things wrong, but suggest that you're kind of going in a direction that might not actually suit you. I hope, you know, through some of these videos that, that I, I, I make and we talk about the ideas and, and, and the photography that, that I expose, you know, us all to, that it sparks ideas, avenues within you that you kind of go, do you know, what? actually, I'm going to explore that. And that from hearing other people's stories of listening to people like Eve Arnold, that you realize that, you know, Somebody can say something negative about you that they can you know, give you some harsh criticism or, 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 may, or to use the words of Eve, I feel like you've been flayed alive. But that's not the end of the road. That's one person's opinion. So this weekend, as you're going out there, whatever you've got up, you know, think about your photography. Think about over the course of this year, looking for someone or you know, just keeping an eye out for somebody who can support you in your, in your photography, even if it's just like a moral support, who can just go, you know, some of you can sit there and go, I, I'm struggling with this, man, I just, I, can I get an honest opinion about it? And somebody who can give you an honest opinion that doesn't consist of just blowing smoke up your backside. That, I think, is something that, you know, if you can find that person, and I can't tell you where I'll find it or specifically because everybody's, of course, is going to be different. Then just, you know, just go with, go with the flow, man. You know, find somebody. They're out there. As the, as the saying goes, the, the teacher appears when, when you need them.
Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more about Eve Arnold's photography, check out this video over here. Her secret to reconnecting. Oh, listen to me with a frog in my throat. Oh, <laughs> the secret to photographing people. Thanks once again so much, and I'll see you again soon.